Welcome to another short session of Small Ministry Great Blessings. I want to just draw to your attention a one-line verse from Romans chapter 14. And I'll come back to that in a moment. You know, in small ministries, um, it's not uncommon to have guests, visitors. And over the years, I've been involved in larger church ministries, and by that I mean a few hundred people, and um, a house, home group, um, house churches, home Bible study groups, discipleship groups. And what I've found is across the whole um, spectrum, you are going to get visitors from time to time. Now, visitors can be a wonderful blessing. They come and sometimes they're visiting family and you know that they're only going to be there for one visit and um, they're returning back to their home. Other times, you get people coming to check you out and because they're looking for something. They're looking for a spiritual home. They're looking for somewhere to be nurtured. But, you know, you and I know that there are those times when people visit and their motives uh, are less than honourable. They're checking you out all right, but not for honourable, praiseworthy purposes. And yet the responsibility that rests upon us is to still treat them with grace. Yes, we need to be wise. We need to have our wits about us because, as we know, as the Apostle Paul told the Ephesian elders, fierce wolves will come into the church. They will deviously sneak their way in, putting on the masks of Satan to appear nice, to appear to be angels of light. They will put on masks to deceive you so that they can get a, a place within your fellowship. And so we need to be wise and wary of such people. But even in those cases, we still need to show them grace within our wisdom. And I want to just share this one verse from Romans 14, and it's verse 19. It has a, a really sweet quality to it. And Paul writes, So then, let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. That's a real blessing there. Because here's the fact, whenever people visit, whenever people pop in or are even checking you out, we don't know, particularly on that first visit, we don't know the true, genuine motives of their heart. And so we want to ensure as ambassadors of Christ that we engage with them, that we show them love and hospitality and the grace of being courteous and welcoming and show them acceptance that we accept them as people and we show them dignity. And in that, there's two purposes, Paul says. We do it to pursue what makes for peace. And it may well be that you will have a person coming and visiting you and checking your ministry out or checking your church out who has been really hurt, really damaged, and they're sceptical. They don't want to walk away from the body of Christ. They don't want to walk away and isolate, which is an admirable quality. And so they're checking you out as bruised people, maybe a bit broken people. And so we want to make sure that we express our fellowship, we express our praise and our teaching of God's word in such a way that will permit them to actually experience a little of the peace of God that dwells within us. But then Paul extends that, and he says, we do this for mutual uplifting. This is a bit of the ministry of refreshment. Now, I, I want to just put aside those people who are devious, sneaky people coming in to try and grease up to you to win your favour, and they have nasty motives. I just want to put them, we all know they exist, and they can be very damaging. But for the moment, I just want to put them to one side and focus on those people who come in maybe genuinely disillusioned, maybe genuinely seeking for a right walk, a right relationship with God, maybe seeking a bit of reconciliation with church, with broken friendships and relationships, or maybe they are just looking for a home where they can relax and be fed the word of God and be nourished so they can become effective servants of Christ themselves. And that's where Paul says we do everything in a peaceful way for mutual uplifting, to refresh them, to build them up, to give them a bit of spiritual 
vitality that they had lost in the past, to uplift them so they feel value in Christ. They feel the preciousness of fellowship with God's people within the body of Christ. We uplift them and it's a mutual thing. We we don't just simply pour everything on them in, in a way that would enable them to become selfish. No, we do it in such an inclusive way that welcomes them in, uh, in Christ as members of the family of God so that they would understand that as they are built up, we are built up. And just as we want to refresh them and uplift them, they are to be uplifting to us also as members of the body of Christ. This takes a little bit of thought. It takes forgiveness sometimes. It takes putting bias to one side. In other words, it takes grace. To not be quick to judge motives. To not to be quick to allow any prejudice to play out. But to show the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Because you know, some of those visitors may just well be an angel, we're told. Yeah, that's a challenging thought. Some of them are very genuine, wonderful people that simply need to be nurtured, to be restored. Others, yeah, I know, some are just plain evil and we need to let them graciously slip in and slip out. But I want to focus your attention today on doing what builds for peace, what builds for mutual uplifting, for the praise of Jesus Christ in everyone's lives. So even visitors that are only visiting you for a one-off occasion, they will walk away feeling refreshed, feeling it was wonderful to be with God's people, feeling that they've got hearts full of thanks and praise to God for the experience of being a part of your body of Christ. And so I, I hope this encourages you as we serve the Lord, as we work within small ministries because we do look for great blessings and we look for great blessings because we want to give great praise to God for his honor. You can check out our some of our other resources at focusbiblechurch.com. I'm Lincoln Forlong and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon.